Hello once again, Rich Gray alongside Bob Kemp, NBC Sports Radio AM 1060. The Cardinals, they talked last week about finishing the game. They did just that. Fourth quarter, they go down and score, get the defensive stop. They win, beat the Lions 25-21. But there were some good, some bad on um, pretty much all three areas. We'll start with the offense, as great as that last drive was. Third down conversions, a problem the entire game. Yeah, they had one, yeah. and that was on a penalty. Yeah. And that's actually the key play of the game, as it turns out, because uh, that was a play in which Carson Palmer fumbled, the Lions had recovered, and it would have been their ball in the 20, roughly. Uh, and uh, they would have gone up two scores at that point. So that was nullified, and they ended up going down and scoring points after that. So that was obviously a big deal, but that was the one third down conversion. Obviously, Larry Fitzgerald, he just said uh, a few moments ago that uh, if, he's 80, if he was 80%, he would have been lucky. Somebody said it looked to feel like one eighty percent. Well, I was, you know, not even that. <laughs> so, but I went. I think he did do is, you know, I, I think he opened up the running game some just to be by being out of the field. And I think they actually should have run the ball more. Uh, you know, I thought that last week and definitely thought that today. Can you get the other one down? I think that they uh, yeah. maybe fell in love with the pass a little too much. But uh, so Fitz leaves. Kerry Taylor, who was activated off the practice squad yesterday, but knew he was going to play pretty much the whole week, or I mean, he had a pretty good idea he was going to be activated. He said uh, he plays a key role, and yeah, he's playing the Fitz part. So he's, he's told us in the locker room after the game that. Uh, yeah, he knew that uh, he was going to get some balls in his direction if they could call the plays that way. So uh, he, he contributed, obviously, Andre Ellington, uh, the big touchdown catch, which was not the same play as last week, even though it looked like it was, but it wasn't the same play he said. And he obviously had the big run in the fourth uh, the fourth quarter drive as far as it turned out to be the, uh, the winning drive. So those two guys contributed on the offensive side also. And, I thought the pass protection was pretty good. Sue didn't do much on pass plays. He was a beast on running plays yeah. uh, occasionally, but uh, I thought they did an okay job with him. Now defensively, uh, they were able to, in the first half, they were getting picked apart by Matthew Stafford, but whatever adjustment they made in the second half, it's even more. Well, I think they kind of did what they wanted the whole game except for the one big play. They went with a 4-1-6. Uh, they had basically four safeties on the field almost the entire game with Jefferson out there a lot. Johnson, Bell, and also Matthew, and uh, the two corners, obviously. So I, th I think that was a Reggie Bush alignment. And they really got a nice break, unfortunately, for Detroit. When Bush got hurt, he uh, tried to come back and play some in the second half, and obviously he, he didn't have it. So he didn't play the last maybe 20, 25 minutes of the game. I don't think he was out there at all. So I think that was maybe an alignment for him the screen passes and the draws and a lot of sprint draws with him. So, but uh, they stuck with it even after that because I think that was pretty successful. And while well, some of the tackling was especially shabby early in the game, that seemed to get better as the game went on also. Now a big thing that's something that was talked about all throughout training camp in preseason was the Cardinals special team and how that was supposed to be an advantage. Right. It wasn't the case last week, but that was yeah. definitely the case today. It was. Justin Bethel did have the penalty, which yeah. was a good thing, but he blocked the kick. And that obviously uh, had a big uh, swing and field position there also. And Zastadil for two years now has just been unbelievable. Uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, Bethel's got a couple. Bethel had a couple tackles there too, but uh, Zastadil's punting and uh, flipping field position has uh, been a real key. For really, yeah, they were the maybe even that horse if you can imagine that last year. Yeah. Arguably the team MVP last year, which is not a good thing if your punter's the MVP. <laughs> I remember Josh Miller was once the uh, voted the MVP in Pittsburgh one year when they had a down season. But you know the combination of those two and Feely did an excellent job on kickoffs today. Almost, a, uh, I think there was one return. Yeah. Uh, and all the other kicks were touchbacks, and that's significantly better than last week. Yeah, bad first half last week it was okay in the second half, and it was good today. Now it's a good local football weekend here locally with the Cardinals winning today, ASU winning in. But under controversial circumstances last night, Sun Devil Stadium. I was on the sideline for that final play, and from where I was standing, it didn't look like his knee touched, but obviously I've seen a couple replays. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the anyway. The rule is if you give yourself up if they put the ball down. It's a college rule. So it doesn't matter if the knee touched. It actually did touch. You saw a still photo of it this afternoon during this game. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they had not. They would have yeah. But their kicking situation is it's shaky it's to not get that good yeah. to begin with. But uh, you know, we'll cover that certainly. In fact, we're going to devote uh, 
an extra segment of ASU tomorrow. I went to the Wisconsin locker room and got reaction from them. I will have ASU reaction, which is a little less than the Wisconsin, Wisconsin uh, reaction. I tried to get an official uh, to say anything. Uh, I and others apparently, I went down and uh, the security guy told me they're not talking and you're not the first guy here who's was really big and upset, so I left. <laughs> so, um, that was that. But we'll have plenty on ASU. That'll be mainly the 10 o'clock hour tomorrow. Lots of Cardinals in the 9 o'clock hour. And plus, we'll uh, have uh, the uh, coach and the uh, quarterback in the 11 o'clock hour. And of course, ASU, they're ranked in the AP poll 23rd. I was looking ahead to next week. It looks like ASU Stanford's going to be the only game of ranked opponents. Yeah, I, going. It's a bad slide of college football. Yeah, I saw. I, I didn't realize it was that bad. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of glimpsed through the schedule. Actually, I had the schedule okay. glimpse in front of me, really. That last night during one of those monstrous ESPN television timeouts, and which are 30 seconds longer than Fox. Why is that? I don't. Know. They got more money to make. I guess, yeah. More advertisers. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's <laughs> next week doesn't look good. It's so good that ESPN did uh, game days at some one double A school next week. <laughs> They're going to North Dakota State or something. Wow. Yeah. That's that, that's going to be great to look forward to. So okay. there should be some exposure for ASU. Yeah. It's a, Seven o'clock Eastern time start too, so it's not, awesome. not you know not playing at three in the morning on the East Coast, so that, that's a good thing. So it'll be a lot of uh, reaction uh, from the Cardinals and Arizona State in the sports on tomorrow. So keep uh, keep the two TNBC Sports Radio AM 1060 on our website and BobKempBottomLine.com as well. Perfect compliment to the sports. Absolutely, absolutely. So yes. for Bob Kemp, I'm Rich Gray. We'll talk to you on Monday.